a, a trial and error. Well, in the past 12 years, we've looked at thousands of scans on people with anxiety disorders and depression, and violence and obsessiveness and attentional problems. And what we found is physical brain evidence for these problems, and that when we can see it, we are much better at targeting treatment uh, because each diagnosis doesn't have just one pattern. They have multiple different patterns. This allows us to see what the pattern is, target treatment, and be much more effective in helping our patients get better. When my patients have seen their own spec scans, they too understand better than I what they've been experiencing for years. The doctors were putting symptoms and symptoms together, and they were still not targeting, not figuring out the right medicine for him. And the same thing happened to my daughter. They didn't have enough information and they gave her the wrong medicine. But you know, computers have hardware and software. And the brain is really the hardware for your life. It needs to work right if the software programs, parenting, being married, education, and so on, are going to fully be effective. The scan, to me, is a tool. It's a tool to help us better diagnose what was going on. All of a sudden, uh, therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists of all types, physicians, um, internists, and so on, they order a scan like this. They now have the roadmap and how to treat complex uh, emotional medical problems. You know, the work still has to be done after the spec scan. It's an evaluation tool, um, but it's an efficient evaluation tool that we haven't had before. Spec scans allow doctors to look at the brain in three dimensions. The scans are typically shown in two different ways at the Eamon Clinic, as surface images and active images. Surface images show underactive areas of the brain. A healthy surface scan shows full symmetrical activity throughout the brain. Activity that is less than the top 45% of brain activity shows up as a hole or a dent. Well, these aren't actual physical holes. What they are are areas of significant decreased activity. This is a brain of a long-time drug addict. When compared with a healthy brain, it is obvious where the holes of altered activity are and sort of the scalloping appearance where it looks bumpy across the surface is what we see in toxic brains. We also see it in people who had brain infections or you know, they've had a lack of oxygen to their brain. Do you think this guy can lead a normal life? Do you think this guy can be his real self when um, the functioning in his brain looks like Swiss cheese? It's not possible. The active images allow us to see the most active areas of the brain. Normally, the most active areas, the top 15% of activity indicated in red color, are in the back part of the brain, the visual cortex and cerebellum, the parts involved with balance, posture, and coordination. When the active areas move forward, they are often associated with psychiatric illness. For example, um, the anterior cingulate gyrus in the front part of the brain it's the brain's gear shifter. It allows you to go from thought to thought, move from idea to idea, be flexible. And what we've seen is that when it works too hard, people can't shift their attention properly, and so they end up locked on with things, stuck on things, same thought in their head over and over. Yes, you have a great cerebellum, lots of really good activity, but you also have too much activity in a part of your brain called the basal ganglia on the left side. What that often correlates with is anxiety and irritability. Um, you just feel wound tight. Yeah, definitely the dark thoughts and the, the mood instability. Pretty familiar with. So, if you wanted three things better, what would they be? I think I would uh, like to stabilize my mood more. Uh, so there weren't so many like ups and downs. Um, I think I would like to have more access to resources uh, that I believe I have, mental uh, capabilities. Those are actually my two main ones, really. I and mean, that's going to, I think, equal happiness. The Amen Clinic has the largest database of brain spec studies in the world as related to psychiatric illness, allowing them to clearly identify many problematic patterns of brain activity in specific areas of the brain that are matched with a wide range of conditions. The results of targeted treatment for various disorders can be easily observed with a follow-up spec scan. Improvements in troubled areas show up clearly. This provides doctors with an incredible and effective measurement tool. This technology is so amazing 
and so incredible. It literally takes my field of psychology and the field of psychiatry out of the dark ages. We can now look at the brain and target medication specifically. And in that follow-up, with the checklist that we use, we can measure exactly what medications are working, what medications are not. And then when we received his scan on medication, it was a pure white brain. It completely, no holes in activity at all. So it was a final confirmation there in, in color that um, we did the right thing for our son and that he'll have the best chance now at getting the best education for him during, during his educational years. SPECT scans are regularly performed for a number of different reasons. With experience and the powerful tool of SPECT, the Amen Clinic can evaluate memory, cognitive decline, strokes, seizures, brain trauma. Sometimes even mild brain injuries can change your whole life. There's an area of the brain called the